A hernia means the abnormal protrusion of an organ or body part outside its usual cavity. A hiatus means a normal anatomical opening, such as the opening in the diaphragm that allows the esophagus to pass through. So, a hiatus hernia is when an organ, typically the stomach, protrudes through the hiatus of the diaphragm into the chest. Increased intra-abdominal pressure is thought to be the main risk factor, which can come from obesity or pregnancy. Chronic constipation can lead to frequent straining, which increases intra-abdominal pressure, as does chronic coughing or heavy lifting. Additionally, as people age, the muscles of the diaphragm become less flexible and lose elasticity, which can cause the stomach to remain in the chest following swallowing. Trauma, in particular seatbelts during car accidents and previous surgeries, may also predispose to a hiatus hernia. They may also be congenital, but this is significantly rarer. Most people with a hiatus hernia are asymptomatic. Given that a hiatus hernia is the most common cause for GERD, symptomatic patients typically complain of epigastric or retrosternal burning known as heartburn, regurgitation, an acidic taste in the mouth, burping or belching, and nausea. These symptoms are typically intermittent and worse after a meal. Other symptoms can include a persistent nighttime cough or wheeze, which can lead to people being diagnosed with asthma. Severe chest pain and shortness of breath can be present, which are often mistaken for a myocardial infarction. And it's also possible to have a bowel obstruction if the bowel loops also move into the chest, or if the stomach twists on itself, forming a volvulus. Hiatus hernias are more common with age, and it's estimated that 60% of adults over the age of 50 have one. It is also more common in women, which may be due to increased intra-abdominal pressure coming from pregnancy. There are four main types of hiatus hernia, the most common being a sliding hernia, where the gastroesophageal junction is shifted upwards beyond its normal range. The displacement means the gastroesophageal junction receives less support from the diaphragmatic hiatus, predisposing to reflux symptoms. Paraesophageal hernias make up the remaining 5%. The classic form of these is where part of the gastric fundus protrudes through the hiatus, rather than the gastroesophageal junction. Type 3 involves a mixture of both a sliding and paraesophageal hiatus hernia, while type 4 involves the herniation of organs other than the stomach, such as bowel, pancreas, or spleen. A barium swallow series is a possible investigation involving swallowing dye before x-rays in order to visualise the upper GI tract. Endoscopy, which is the use of a camera to directly visualise inside the body, can be placed into the esophagus to evaluate for a hiatus hernia as well as look for any lesions in the esophagus. Others include manometry, which is measuring the intraluminal pressure and the contractile movements of the esophagus and can diagnose achalasia. pH monitoring can be done to monitor the acidity in the esophagus and, if found to be low, may suggest a hiatus hernia. In asymptomatic patients who are found to have a hiatus hernia, no treatment is typically offered unless there is an anatomical risk of complications. Lifestyle measures are usually first line for symptomatic patients, including losing weight, avoiding large meals or meals before bed, stopping smoking or reducing alcohol intake, and stopping the use of tight belts or clothing. If symptoms persist, then proton pump inhibitors are usually the first line medication offered such as omeprazole or lansoprazole. Antacids and histamine 2 antagonists like ranitidine are other options. Surgery is considered in severe cases refractory to medication or if there is a high risk for complications such as volvulus and bowel obstruction or ulcers and barotesophagus.